Welcome, Leon. How you doing, man? Uh, great. Um, I took a dump. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm good. I have my coffee. Cheers. Self-made. So feeling good in this morning. <laughs> So wait, this is this your office here? Do you have like a squat rack in your quote unquote office? Yeah, yeah right. So as a physio, right? So I need some yeah. equipment. And uh, in this uh, pandemic time, I thought, well, it would be great to be a little bit more independent from studios and so on for content, for my own training. And uh, yeah, freedom as with you is very important for me. So mm. That's why I, mean, I decided it to have... with with the green plants hanging down and everything. That's amazing. Do you have anything else yeah. other than the squat rack? Yeah. So, well, just uh, let's have a look. I, I, I will I will show you around. So, whoppa, that's the the squat rack with the platform. Yeah. So I could also uh, it's a rented flat. So um, with that solution right here, mm. I could um, also like drop weights and stuff. Sick. Yeah, and so. That's where we are right now. Sick. Yeah. Dude. So everything you need, uh, especially for like weights and upper body calisthenic stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Love it. So, Leon, you know, for, for people listening here, you're someone that um, has drastically improved the quality of my life because uh, the, the first time we worked together i had a shoulder impingement diagnosed by you i didn't even know what the hell it is yeah um, i had a thing on my right shoulder and <clears throat> you got recommended to me by alexander waller and he was like yeah you should check him out da, 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 da. and then i remember i was on the call with you and i'm like how long do we need to fix this and you said about 30 days and i think it was like day 32 or 33 where it was completely painless that was pretty epic. <laughs> yeah, so most most of the things are uh I I hope I could uh, to summarize that so easily for every pain, but in yeah. your case it was uh a mixture of lots of strength training mm. and um you've put a lot of muscle on in the last uh, years, right? And so your body adapted to a certain kind of movements and mm -hmm. what i'm doing with athletes and people who are doing regular sports in in many different ways is uh, to look in which way they are usually moving mm -hmm. and what kind of input uh, would be helpful to improve their well-being yeah that's the first thing because if you if you feel better you move better automatically so first is improving how you feel in your body and then it improves your movement and vice versa yeah. you feel better when you move better right so yeah. uh yeah that's what what we did <laughs> you know it, it's funny because um i i'm the kind of guy that's like unless it hurts or it pulls somewhere or i feel a push or a pull somewhere in my body it probably doesn't work and and you gave me some super in my eyes super random exercises <laughs> I'm like, what the hell and I, it almost felt like some woo woo stuff to me but of course it had like you know it had actual <laughs> physiology physiological background and i'm like I, I don't know, you know, and I think I even told you, I'm like, hey, like it doesn't pull anywhere. I don't feel any anything anywhere. Like, are you sure it's working? And um, and, well, apparently it did. And then um, and then I had to think a year or two off where I was just super crazily focusing on the biz. And then I just started working again with you because um, I was just thinking, do I have anything? Sp oh yeah, my the ten I can't even remember. I had the tennis elbow thing, and uh. that's also <laughs> gone now. It's gone. Like I, I just, I was just hitting the gym. I, I got up earlier just so I could hit knock out a gym before I have nice. you on the podcast. Um, and um, I'm like, hey, it doesn't hurt anymore. It's kind of funny. I think I still have. I still want to wait a little bit until I do the exercises that kind of made it worse. Yeah. But overall, it's it's really cool, man. Yeah, most of the time we forget how much pain we had when it's gone. Yeah. But when we are in pain, it's one of the most important things in our life. Mm. So 
we th- th- there's a bit of attention to that that uh, what i do is not only helping people move better but also educating around the pain and education around pain is so much connected with every emotion that we felt before every trauma that we had mm-hmm. we um we discussed that a little bit earlier that's why i said well let's mm-hmm. let's talk about that on the podcast is that the the experience you had with the, the masseuse the massage yeah. therapist i'll t- i'll tell it here one more time so yeah. i usually go to massage every week I have a great massage therapist in Kiev, but of course, you know, can't go there right now. So I'm kind of like bouncing back and forth. I got a really good massage therapist in Cyprus every time I'm there. And um, just last two two weeks ago, before I went to Dubai, I hadn't been in massage about a month or so. And I come in and I usually go to this Thai massage place, which is it's a legit actual sports Thai massage, you know. But there was like new people there. I think a new owner took it over or something like that. So I'm like, hey, I'm back. You know, I need a super hard sports massage. And then she's like, yeah, you know, I'll give you this lady here. And, you know, it was a scrawny, like middle-aged Thai lady. She was probably even younger than middle-aged. She's probably my age. And I'm like, yeah, heart massage, you know, let's go. Because the last thing I want is that I get that I get my time wasted by like a 90 minute relax massage bullshit, you know, where it doesn't hurt. Like, again, like I, it needs to hurt for me. It needs to be deep, you know. So I'm like, make it really hard sports massage. And she's like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, are you sure? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So, yep. you know, I lay down on my on my stomach and she starts digging into my into my lat up here. And she literally instantly like to find some crazy spot. And she's like, most most therapists never find this spot, but yours is like super fucked up. So she starts digging and digging and digging. And I start like screaming. And she's like, hey, let me turn on the music because you're scaring away the other customers with your screaming. You know, they hear it outside. So I'm like, go for it. Um, and then she did the same on the left side. And I started crying. And it was not like tears in my eyes. It was waterfall like snot and tears and you know like because you have this little hole that you look through with your face and underneath like the floor was just (laughs) wet it was like all this like after like squatting hard yeah yeah yeah. like all these tears were just dripping down my face and it wasn't crying from the pain yeah it wasn't like oh it hurts i have tears it was crying from like like the last time i cried like this was probably when i was like seven years old i was I was crying. I was sobbing. I was literally like, my face must have been so funny. It looked probably, it felt like I was a little boy again. And I talked to you about this. It, and, you know, I talked to my mom. She's a psychotherapist. She does a lot with psychosomatics. It's probably just like, and you'll know best, like it's trauma that was stuck in my muscles that got released. And it wasn't even that I was sad. I was sad and happy and grateful and in, pain at the same time it was all the emotions that are there on this earth clumped up together and just Mm. released and like floating through my blood circulation that's what it felt like Mm. and then even on my way back so i'm like crying like crazy i I took a selfie after that sent it to my to my girlfriend i'm like what is this um and then i was I, i left the place and i was going to starbucks to meet some of my clients and i listened to elton john uh, Rocket Man, I just start crying again, just because I listened to Elton John. So there's these people walking down the street, and they see this 32 year old man, well dressed, <laughs> you know, and 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 he's just crying. And I was like crying and laughing at the same time. So yeah. all these people that were coming towards me, they all like changed the side of the street because they're like, "What is this?" <laughs> um, and and first person I wanted to talk to you about this was you. Yeah, so that's um, thanks a lot for the uh, for getting back to that um, yeah. because that's what I meant about pain education, right? So there's so much we we know about pain from our own life. So some emotional pain that we experienced, some um, physical pain. So we think we know what pain is and. When we get deeper into that, we most of the time don't see the connections, the similarities between mm. those, those different pains, you know. 
And there is one, one phrase that I always keep in mind, which uh, I want to talk about with my clients as well, when they don't know how to deal with the pain and don't feel that they get to hold on that. Um, I always say, well, the body keeps the score. It's also a, mm. a great book, well researched about uh, trauma and uh, and pain. And it it sounds sadly, it sounds a little bit spiritual, whatever. For people who are not into that, it maybe throws them off a little bit. But that's where the physical pain can be a great communication tool where they open up towards more possibilities to deal with that pain because mm. it's always to, to uncover certain resources. What kind of resources do we have to deal with a pain? Yeah. Emotionally, physically, doesn't matter. Because for me, it's 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 the same, right? So there there was the um, the movement towards separating body and mind. Yeah. Um, Rene Descartes, right? The philosopher separated it, but we know more and more from research and from our own experience when we really when we're really thinking about it that we cannot separate it. That's why I love the phrase body mind as one word, mm. because there is no separation in between. And when you deal with pain and when you experience pain, there is always something that um, is connected towards um, not only the physical, but also the emotional and maybe as well towards the or with the societal aspect not society in general, but more your surrounding, your mm -hmm. social circle. Yeah. Um, for example, you're an upcoming soccer player and you really want to start your career and then you train and train and train and train. So that's a little bit like my story. And um, then you, you cannot participate in the training anymore because your knee hurts. You're thinking like, well, the season was going great so far. Why now? What have I done wrong? I just kept training. I started to look into my diet and so on and so on. Try to improve everything. But then there is this pressure emotionally. Not, all, not also pressure physically that I'm pushing myself and pushing myself, but yeah. the emotional pressure where I where I try to be better and better every day. So that's get thrown into the mix. And then maybe there comes some, this, this, this social pressure where I fear losing my, um, my, my, my stance in the team. Yeah. So everything that happens with that um, influences the pain and your pain sensitivity um, that's why I said earlier, it's not only about the movement. First, it's about how you feel. Mm. And then it's about how you move and the other way around. There's a lot of interesting points that you brought up here, especially what you said is like when you're, I think it's, it also has a lot to do with your identity. You know, like if your identity is like, oh, I'm an up and coming football player, athlete, heart worker or you know i'm identifying with the success of my business and then that's taken away from you because you're burnt out mentally and or physically or you're injured and you can't perform the things that you need to perform as an athlete who are you and you know in <clears throat> in my first business dating advice business we we used to say so much so 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 much draw your state from within draw happiness from within because sometimes when you go out there and you're socializing, be it at a party, at a bar, wherever, it can just happen that first interaction you do, you have is, is great. So now you start riding that wave and second interaction is great, third, third, fourth, and you're just crushing and you feel good. But it could also be the exact opposite. First interaction just happens to be shitty. Like the person that you talk to just doesn't want to talk to you. So now you're going downward. So 
yeah, it brings you to your highest highs, but it also brings you to your lowest lows. But if you learn to identify yourself not on any outside stimulus, be it success as an athlete, be it strength or stamina with your body, whatever it is, or with your successful social circle, or with the money that your business is making, if you if you can unlink yourself from that and you just say like, hey, I'm, that doesn't keep me from enjoying my day, that doesn't keep me from enjoying this meal, this company that I have, and so on and so forth. Like if you learn to do that, life becomes a hell of a lot easier, but it also sounds really easy. It sounds much easier than it's done. Mm. Um, and I, and the other thing that I found interesting, because I never talked to you about this, is you you were about to become a pro soccer player or semi-pro soccer player, and then you somehow got into mobility. How how exactly did that work? Yeah, so um, it's it's more a semi-pro, not not a real pro. All right, <laughs> because you know there there is this decision uh, to be made at a certain age, right? Um, where you either get to choose the roads to be a pro athlete and really like focus on that. Although I really loved football, so I I I, I just I I cannot describe it into words like how how you want to describe love, right? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so, um, oh, I get goosebumps. <laughs> All right, <laughs> when your nervous system reacts, you know it's true. So, um, <laughs> um, you're talking about the body mind connection, right? So, um, about this about. 16 years old um there there were a lot of things happening first was getting into a better team um so a little bit closer towards that goal to maybe be something and to develop something in that uh, soccer so fo football uh, range and um then Due to changing teams, I also moved places or vice versa. I moved places with my family. That's why mm. I changed teams and um, got the chance to be on a, uh, well, in league ranking better, um, on a better team. But moving places was so hard for me at that age because at 16 you know that's the first time where you really have that sense of bonding with your friends yeah. for me alcohol and that stuff was never like interesting i i, I never drank uh was never drunk before and uh, so no no alcohol for me but uh, i connected with friends right not through partying and so on but you you are a little bit more independent at that age and you realize your independence a little bit more and and want to uh, experience that so moving to a different place um while the school baggage increases because yeah. of uh, uh high school finishing high school um was hard because my social circle kind of like fell away and that's where I experienced firsthand what kind of pains there are and in which way the one pain influences the other because this breaking away of that social circle um, was then leading towards me kind of creating a little bit of uh, uh, anorexia, which Damn. was just the result of not eating enough while doing high-level sports. Mm -hmm. Because eating for me was then the only thing I could control, mm. right? So I focused on that um, really heavily, but didn't saw the whole picture that my ability to, to do sports in, in which way uh, I, I wanted um, were decreasing. Yeah. So that influences the other and the possibility to play on a semi-high level um, football team uh, was then diminishing and diminishing and diminishing. And then the whole loop started again. So that's where I made the decision. All right. First, maybe I should let go of that dream. 
Um, I'm 16, 16, 17, finishing high school. High school for me is important because I wanted to have options in life. Yeah. And that was the first thing I was taught, right? Now I know, okay, there are so many different ways. I don't need to have a high school degree and, and, yeah. and such and such or, or a university degree. But uh, at that age, of course, heavily influenced by my parents and so on. So I thought I want to have options. So I need to get good grades. Got that. Um, finished, finished very well, but um, needed to let go of that dream to become a soccer player. Mm -hmm. which then led to a phase of uncertainty and a little bit of crisis, of course, because my identity, as you said earlier, was wrapped up in that I'm a football player. Yeah, classic. And what what else is there to do? What else <laughs> is there to, to enjoy <laughs> when yeah. that love breaks away? And uh, so I got into a little bit of strength training, but never really found that passion in that, like to only go into strength training, do my sets, do my reps. I was like, okay, muscles, cool, being athletic, cool, but I'm, I'm not about the aesthetics. It's, it's really unfulfilling for me. So I digged a little deeper and um, I found capoeira and then some handstands. And I don't know why, but I always had that dream to be able to do a handstand. Yeah. At first, it was uh, my imagination went towards a like, um, uh, how you say, tour jubel. Oh my gosh, a celebration. Uh, yeah. Celebration when, when I shot a goal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. It looks really dumb when I imagine it right now. So I'm <laughs> scoring a goal, running towards the flag <laughs> at the end I of do. the pitch, doing a handstand. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but well so <laughs> it was a little bit of inspiration for me to to get started into that movement journey and then i found Ido portal um a movement teacher from israel who uh yeah really digged into that whole movement uh theme and shtick and learned from everything uh, that was around him and uh, so capoeira and martial arts and strength training, gymnastics and dance and this and that. So I found that really inspiring because uh, this theme of having options um, was then moving towards my own body, not only towards life in general. And then I saw him, learned a lot from him and saw that I was fucking weak, mm. that mm. I couldn't do anything. Uh, I was stiff. I was not able to go into certain positions. Uh, I couldn't do a resting squat. I couldn't hang for more than 10 or 15 seconds because my arms and grip strength and so on were uh, too weak. So, yeah, I, I took his advice on to start my education uh, in that area and uh, first thing I did to open up my body to be able to do certain movements mm. and certain positions and not being limited by my inability to move in my own body right mm. um, so break that up a little bit and that's where I, I came from damn I, I had no idea this, uh when you were anorexic like how skinny are we talking here um started out with healthy 75 kilos how how tall are you uh one 175 so yeah. centimeters 175 yeah. <laughs> i don't yeah, know yeah. inches like i know either good luck get, get get away with that, that shit <laughs> <laughs> inches damn we're in europe here we got normal measurements <laughs> yeah right normal <laughs> so uh yeah 175 uh 75 kilos so as a soccer player ideal weight yeah. right i was a little bit more the the um aggressive player was mm. playing defense uh although i kind of small uh i uh checked everyone and uh. <laughs> Uh, that was good. And then it go went down to 65. So 10 kilos less. Damn. Yeah. I mean, you're taller than me. Um, 
I'm I'm 172 tall and I'm 74, 73, 74 kilos right now. And that's pretty lean for me. So 65, yeah. dude. Yeah, so As now, now I weigh 92. No way. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, I don't look that much, but it's my lower body. So yeah, dude. Damn. Yeah, yeah. That is that is impressive, man. Holy it's the, shit. It, it's the legs. <laughs> the legs and the ass. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glutes are the new biceps. I heard. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's weird because um, my uh, one of my uh, first phys- fitness mentors, Mario Tomic, shout out. He kept giving me glute exercise, you know, and I'm like, after two years, I started asking questions like, "Hold on, why? Wait, wait a minute. I keep doing all these dumbass ass exercises. I'm a dude." <laughs> And and girls started no girls started telling me like wow you have a great ass and I'm like oh, I don't even care what I want my biceps and shoulders <laughs> let's go you know yeah man so that was weird so I still have I still have a a, a pretty well in shape ass which is fun I also think um it's actually a good question that I want to ask you too is like I feel and, like and I, we worked on your squat mobility right so we did it, we did yeah, so, right so the stimulus of the squats are even better right now because you get good into point. a better position yeah, <laughs> man, yeah man. I got that ass to the grass all day um I, I, it's funny because I feel like my my leg muscles lower body muscles grow so much more easily my upper body muscles grow easily too I'm a hard gainer so I get fat instantly <laughs> um, I literally like, yo, I got to eat you, you, now, you know, my measurements, I got to eat like 2,200 calories. Otherwise that's for me, like almost the bulk, mm. which is like, I'm so jealous of anybody else that needs to eat a lot. I'm like, get out of here. I, I'm a big yeah. dude. 2,200 calories is nothing, man. No, I, no, I'm just constantly, I, I have, I also think I have an eating problem. Uh, I just counterbalance it with massive amounts of discipline. But like, <laughs> Yeah, literally. When yeah. I have a cheat day, I don't. I have no off button. No off button. I eat uh, like until more, I, like a dog. That uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a dog. Like throwing. Like I, I, I don't throw up, but like I literally like until I have such a stomach ache that I have to lay in bed. Uh, I don't have yeah. that off button. I love food. I think about food mo- when I'm really hardcore on a diet. I think about food more than I think about sex. Mm. It's always on my mind. Well, when when you're on a diet, that's kind of normal. So I, I talk a lot um, okay, with some thing. bodybuilder friends and coaches and learn, uh, as I told earlier, I'm doing like all sorts of things. And so I learn from everything. Yeah. Um, that what makes me good in rehabilitating pain for different kind of people who are doing different kinds of sports, because I almost did every kind of sport. Mm. Um which then also like leads sometimes to conversations about diet and about self-image and about like certain other things because different kinds of sports have different kinds of ideals and ways to think about it, right? So a dancer would think about certain movements and his own body in a different way than a bodybuilder would. Yeah. And that goes for diet and everything that's connected with that. And um, my friends like told me, well, when you're on a diet, there's like only one thing like you just want to eat <laughs> yeah, like exactly. you just want to eat and survive like you're yeah. cold all the fucking time like you you have no sexual drive mm. uh, there is only when is the next meal sometimes even while having oh, that hell. meal that you're yes. eating right now yes <laughs> 100 percent. i'm like like this is not enough where's when is the next meal gonna be but is it is that a thing that the lower body muscles grow eat more easily than the upper body muscles, or is it just in my imagination? Uh, there, there's no generalization to be made with that. Okay. Like that's really kind of genetic and a genetic component that's interesting. Um, talking about like bodybuilding and aesthetics. Um, one of my well, you could say friends and mentors in that area. Um. He builds that incredible gym. I am, uh, I'm telling you about for years <laughs> that you should good that you should go to. <laughs> so it's Das Gym in in Vienna. Yeah, and um, he said it's an interesting thought that not only genetically in the way of like how your body processes the stimulus of strength training, but also genetically your ability to push yourself and Mm. to go into a certain intensity, which Mm. is necessary for building muscle, right? We have Mm. like several different ways to build muscle and 
one way is the mechanical stress that you put on a muscle so um, that you break down tissue and that is connected towards a certain intensity that only happens at a certain intensity, which doesn't mean that you like throw yourself under the bus in every training, mm -hmm. but um, that is also something that you need to learn um, to go into a certain intensity, which talking about the lower body is much more difficult there because the muscle is bigger, mm. right? So to get a really intense stimulus in that area um, and to feel it properly, the first thing that will fatigue is your nervous system, not the muscle. Mm. So the first thing you need to learn is to deal with that nervous system um, nervous system intensity, nervous system stimulus, nervous system uh, um, fatigue, mm -hmm. right? Bitch so ass nervous system. It, it's, yeah, oh, right. <laughs> bitch, that is. <laughs> Fucking weakness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I mean, you know, the, the age old saying, like, when you think you can't go anymore, you probably just like 30% at your act of your actual limit. Yeah, like the Navy SEAL rule. The Navy SEAL rule, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Like I said, like for me, it's like I go to the gym for lower body once a week and upper body twice a week. Mm. And oftentimes I skip because like if I skip once, then it's the lower body because like, my legs are huge. Mm. And when I do go, I'm just destroyed for three days. Yeah, like, right. I, I need a wheelchair, you know, I'm, I can barely get off the chair. Like because I'm sitting here, for example, I'm like, let me get up, get some coffee. I think about it three times if I really need to. <laughs> <laughs> like, do I really need that coffee? You know, and um, and yeah, it, it's great. Like I said, like I'm I'm pretty happy with the way my body responds to stimuli because it grows, it does what I want. It's just if I could eat a little more, that would be nice. Because 2,200 calories as a grown ass man, it's just a, an abomination. <laughs> so, qu question about that. I'm curious to know that uh, you said well maybe you have a kind of an eating problem so let's let's put that into into brackets right now but um that's your your sense of um dealing with food and so on and then you said that um sometimes or most of the time your body does what it's supposed to mm -hmm. How aware are you of your body? So what is your relationship to your body in general? How, how aware am I in, in terms of what exactly? So more in the way of... Um, more in the way of what is your relationship towards your body? Is it only a tool or... Is it something that you're really in tune with? That's why I said, like, how connected are you? Mm. Um, how aware are you of your mm. body? Or is it just that it needs to work? It needs to work for the training. So yep. in order to be a machine in my business. Yep. And you, you, you know what I mean? What, what yeah, kind 100%. of like connections or maybe <clears throat> mental connections do you make with that? You know, I'd love to say now, oh, yeah, yeah, I take care of my body. But objectively speaking that's not the truth. The truth is that I often get sick and I would say 90% of the cases is not because I catch a virus or a cold or a flu. 90% of the cases is just because I overdo everything because mm. I push, 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 wake up one morning. I'm tired. My body's screaming. Give me break. And I'm like, nah, nah, pussy, just plow through until I get sick. Cause my body knows this motherfucker is not going to stop. This motherfucker, like this motherfucker doesn't care if we're tired or if this hurts. This motherfucker needs to be put to bed for days. We need to force him to take a break because otherwise he will never fucking do it. And I know that. And I, it's, I, this is something that I've been dealing with for like 10 years, probably even longer. And I've gotten better at it, but I'm still nowhere at a, at a, at a harmonious balance it keeps happening in dubai same spiel you know like before i flew to dubai we like we were meeting clients at one of my favorite restaurants in prague and we were just eating and having a good time and then i'm like well i gotta get up at 5 a.m fuck it i'll just stay up 
So stayed up all night, slept four hours on the train to Vienna, slept in the in the freaking first class. But of course, that was only two, three hours with the takeoff and the landing procedure. Then I'm landing in Dubai. I should get some rest. No, no, no. Let's meet our friends. Let's go hang out. Let's go shoot some videos already. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Wake up next morning. I could need some rest. No, no, no. We're in Dubai. I'm paying money to be here. Let's go shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Boom, get sick. Come home to Austria. What was the first thing I do? I'm like, I might be sick, but... We have a vlog to shoot where we're stopping the time watch. How long does it take me from the sandy dunes of Dubai to the snowy mountains of Austria? So I'm like, fuck it. Get up early in the morning. Go, you know, always until my body is like, yo, let's hit this motherfucker with some really crazy fatigue until he's in freaking bed for two days. And then I'm in bed for two days. That's my li- story of my life. <laughs> so uh, this is okay that we we talking about that. Yeah, man, all day. Let's go. Open book. I don't care. Because um, you said it would be great to be able to eat more, right? Mm, yeah. So what is what is eating for? For me, and it's the second thing, to go a little bit deeper on that real quick, I thought about this a lot, and I'm like, why do I love food so much? And just recently, I had an epiphany we were really, really poor as um, my parents got divorced. My mom brought up two, three kids alone. Granted, my father was still there. We met him every other weekend. He was still supporting. He was paying child support and all that. In fact, my parents were very good friends. We, we spend Christmas together, which is really cool. We go. I love your stories with your dad, by the way. It's thank awesome you. Thank to you. See. That's great. Yeah, I love that. Me too. It's beautiful. Like kudos to both my parents. But at the same time, like I felt that poverty. I really felt it. And over the last years, I always thought like, yeah, we were probably lower middle class. But over the last years, I noticed like more and more in my memories, like, no, man, we were poor as fuck. Um, so I think one of the triggering That's the factors- romanticization of uh, looking back. Probably, right. probably. And, and looking back, like I think one of the things that I noticed was like we always had scarcity. And me, like, I think I have a natural inclination to enjoy food, which is normal. A lot of people do, you know. And then on top of that, you put that scarcity. And I know, for example, we would have, we would always buy like the cheapest, cheapest bread. And, you know, we would be like, like my mom would say like, hey, you know, like this bread needs to last for till Friday, you know. So in my head, I'm like, I need to pace myself. I would love to for breakfast, for example, right? We always eat toast bread, bre- toasted bread and for breakfast. And I would always be like, I would love to have one or two more slices, but I also know we, we're fucked unless I pace myself. And then like one time we bought the expensive bread that we saw at the freaking TV commercial. And it's like, everybody pace yourself. Only two slices. That's the good bread. It's four times more expensive. So I think from that scarcity, that's where I'm like, I need to pace myself, I need to pace myself, I need to pace myself. And now where I don't have that scarcity anymore, plus I love food, it's like, I'm rich. Give me all the food you got, all of it. I don't care. I don't want to have the scarcity ever. I don't want to feel that scarcity anymore. So food is a way of expressing your freedom, right? Yeah. And, but just in general, food, first of all, first function of food is give you energy, right? So in order to get energy from that food, it needs to be digested. Yeah. But digestion is a parasympathetic um, action, right? So your body needs to slow down to really process that food, to Mm -hmm. really digest it, to really get that energy from it. That doesn't happen really when you're in a sympathetic state. So being alert, being active, being Mm -hmm. engaged, being like on the run. So what if when you would want to enjoy more food, because on one hand it's you experiencing freedom in a way, um and it's connected with with well-being for you right mm-hmm. that's maybe 
one outlet of well-being that you have, but in every other way for your body to enjoy that well-being, there is maybe no other outlet. A hundred percent, dude. I never saw it that way. That eating for me is one of the few times of the day where I'm just eating, where I'm where I'm not where I'm not expecting myself to perform, to be on top of my game, where I'm not expecting myself to do something other than freaking sitting there, maybe watching some YouTube video and eating. It's in fact, one of the things, I mean, now that you're saying this, I'm, as you explained this, my mind was like, holy shit, he, he freaking got it. In fact, like I used to snap, snap at people when they asked me something while I'm eating. I'm like, can I freaking eat in peace? Can, can, like, the one thing during the day where I can't freaking be bothered, like, can you let me eat this freaking cereal or the chicken or whatever? And now I know why. And now I know why they didn't understand it. Because for me, that's like this and maybe taking a shower are like the only two things where I know I can't work. I'm not supposed to. My mouth is full. I can't talk. I can't help my clients. Leave me the fuck alone. Yeah. So what you're saying is, is like part of my urge to eat a lot of food is because that's the only way I allow myself to kind of relax and let go. That's one thing. And the other thing is that I see is um, that your body does not really process that much. That's why you cannot really eat a lot because like, you don't know where your next meal is coming from, not consciously, but subconsciously because you're always in a hurry. Yeah. So, so you're... Your, your body does not know when to get the next ability to rest and yeah. digest. Damn. Right. And it's a funny thing. Like, even when I have nothing to do, I mean, at, at this point, like my business runs pretty much an autopilot. But so when I'm like, hey, today we're going to do nothing, we play video games and carding, I'm still hurrying. Turn on the PlayStation. Let's go. You know, like oh, let's go to the carding. I'm still hurrying. It's so ingrained within me because I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to dick around doing nothing. What happens when you're doing nothing? It's what just a waste. It, fe it feels like it's a waste of my time. I'm like, what am I doing here? Let's go get shit done. Okay, so when you waste time, like, what emotion does come up? Pressure. Where exactly in your body do you feel that pressure? Uh, well, it's, it's hard to say. I would say in my, in my head and in my chest, probably. I don't even know. Am I supposed to know this? Well, you, you know that, as I said earlier, the body keeps the score, right? Yeah. So you could tune into that right now as with meditation and so on, tuning in, tuning out of thoughts, emotional states and so on. Would you want to do a, a quick exercise? Hell yeah, let's go. Okay, cool. Freaking so, exercise on the podcast. Let's perfect. Go. And by the way, because I said it's in my head, that's probably why I get migraines. I feel like I would think just now, like thinking about it, I probably feel it in my temple, like I, like, uh, uh you know, like kind of I look like that's probably why I get migraines hmm. or one of the reasons. I don't know. I'm a, not a sign. I'm, not, I'm just an idiot, you know, but yeah, but, but th that's what I said that body and mind is connected the emotions are connected and yeah. and pain oftentimes that expresses bodily is uh not it, it there is not the the it's not the source all the time so the emotions are not the source but there is a correlation it's not a causation yeah. but there's a correlation yeah. that's why i told you earlier let's dig up resources and different kinds of perspective how to deal with the pain yeah one thing is movement. Yeah. One thing is like being active and doing it in an active way. The other thing is let's look at the emotions and let's look at the social circle and everything that is influencing or could be influencing the pain. And you have the control over to influence. Mm -hmm. Right. So let's, let, let's, let's, let's don't do theory. Let's do practice. Let's go. Um, in order to maybe get a sense of where that 
emotion um, expresses uh, bodily. Um, just close your eyes because then there are less sensations yep. like getting right. at you, right? Close my eyes. Perfect. Um, thanks a lot for your openness. Um, Easy, man. And now let's try to reconcile this, this um, experience that we talked about earlier. So doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Like really get into that. Not doing anything. Like wasting your fucking time away. All right. All right. What emotion does come up? Is it that pressure again? Could you like maybe grab it a little bit? Yeah, it's it's like it's like um impatience. Like, come on, let's go. What are we doing? Okay, that kind, so that's kind of what it sounds like in my head, you know. Okay, perfect. So to to differentiate that a little bit, impatience, <clears throat> sorry, impatience is a perception, right? That's not a feeling. Mm. What is the feeling behind that impatience? Yeah, that, that's a good question. I, 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 it does feel like pressure, you know, like okay. there's a, a certain push that I feel. Mm. It's like you're pushing someone, you know, that's standing uh -huh. in front of you in line and doesn't and just takes forever. You're like, hey, like, come on, let's go. Mm. Okay. Where when you now tune in, <clears throat> not those thoughts, like and the, those those pictures, but in your body, where do you feel this pressure? Like to push forward. Yeah, in my shoulders, mm -hmm. head, sh shoulders and head, like from like neck, back of my neck. Shoulders, forehead, th that's kind of like where I feel it. Mm, okay, okay. Try to, try to, thanks a lot. Try to tune in to a little bit more. Try to really sense that pressure right now. Mm. Yeah, I also feel it in my chest, mm -hmm. my, my sternum. Mm -hmm. And you know, also I feel it in my hands. There's one thing mm -hmm. I, I notice a lot is that my hands... They often clasp something, grasp something, you know, mm -hmm. so or they, kind of you know, like, like ticks, like a, huh? So tick, ticks, like you, you, you just need to like build up that pressure. Yeah, hundred percent, exactly. Like oftentimes I have things like this, like I'm playing with the the i mm -hmm. the AirPods and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And you play some guitar, right? I do, yeah. Mm -hmm. Could be sometimes, sometimes, also a way to deal with that. But um, no matter um, the expressions, when you feel that pressure, when you try to go back as far as you can remember, when was the first time you felt that pressure? Uh, I probably already felt that at school. Because funny mm. enough, my parents never pushed me to get good grades, mm. but I did. I always did that myself, which was dumb. Such a waste of time. Nobody ever cared about it. Good grades right? later. That's, I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that's yep. self-referential commentary, right? Mm. So let's let's keep that to a side, okay. the self-referential commentary, because that we are doing that all the time. Mm. And that's just the way from our mind to not feel deeper. Okay. <clears throat> like to be busy, right? With an yeah. answer or to express something. Yeah. Does there a certain situation come up? For, from the in, school in, thing? In school, right. Where this pressure is connected with. What I, what I remember very vividly multiple times was like constantly waking up in the morning okay. and you know that time between you waking up and between you knowing where you are what day of the week it is <laughs> that blessed time that was always nice and then like the first thing by the way i noticed a lot of times was stomach ache in the morning mm. because i'm like oh today i got this exam and that exam and i got this lesson I got to get up and, and it was also lack of sleep that I that always bothered me. Like no matter when I would, uh, when I would go to sleep, 
the fact that I had to get up early just fucked me up so much. Mm. It was also one of the reasons why I wanted to build a business because I'm like, then I can wake up whenever I want. Yeah. But funny enough, I don't feel it in my stomach anymore. Mm-hmm. But back then it was just like, just like, oh, my stomach hurts. The moment I realized what time of the week it was right after waking up. Okay. And um, when, when you try to express that into emotion, what emotion is that? This stomach ache, this pressure, this I would this say, thing. I would say anger. Hmm. Okay. When you try to tune into that anger, if you want to go a little bit deeper, mm. really feel that anger. Mm. How yeah, old is that anger? What's your first memory of that anger? Like I said, I think for me, the first memory is like school. School? Okay. Yeah. And when you feel that anger, do you oftentimes, when you now go a little bit further into, into your present day, present life, mm-hmm. does that anger arise sometimes as well? Oh, hell yeah. All the time. Mm. Mm. Okay. In which way does it express us? What do you mean exactly? So which situation come up? You can, you can open your eyes if you want. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yep. Um, so you said, well, it comes up all the time. Yeah. In, in, in which way does this anger, because we went from situations, perceptions, self referral commentary yeah. to, er, to an emotion. Yeah. So, and with that emotion, we are much clearer. We have a much clearer sensation of what's yeah. really going on. Yeah. And this sensation leads to certain actions, leads to certain things, certain behaviors, and then also certain mind frames, right? Yeah. I'll, and... So mo- most most of the time that anger comes up when I want to go fast, but I can't. Mm-hmm. For example, I got something to do. I got to go to the store real quick. That's usually why I have assistants who do that stuff for me. So I'm, I'm at least somewhat conscious of that. I don't want to put myself in situations where I need to be fast, but I can't because of something else. Because when I'm alone by myself and I want to go fast, I just move faster, right? I got something to do. I just do it faster. But for example, like I'm, I'm in traffic, I'm driving somewhere. That's again, why usually I have someone else drive me and I'm stuck behind someone slow. That makes me angry. Or I'm walking somewhere. I'm, I'm a fast walker. And someone walks super slowly in front of me and I can't walk around them. That makes me very angry too. And now that, you, now, that I, now that you're making me talk about this, one of the things I keep dreaming about, I, I don't have nightmares. It's funny enough because my girlfriend a lot, has a lot of nightmares. I don't. I never have these like, someone's stabbing me or I'm burning or something like that. Yeah, the only, they are the, much more sensitive. Huh? My girlfriend as well. They female energy is much more sensitive to probably, and they have the craziest the... freaking. Night. I dreamed that I was stabbing my mom. I'm yeah, like, Whoa, yeah. what the hell? Um, so that was not my girlfriend, but don't I don't want to give away here like dreams, personal dreams from my girlfriend. But the thing is, like, the closest thing that I have to a nightmare is and that's crazy. Is like I want to go somewhere, but I can't. Like I want to go snowboarding but the bus isn't showing up or I'm missing the bus or I'm trying to move. Or, or there's a podcast scheduled. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Or there's a podcast scheduled. I, or the thing is, exactly. <laughs> Be, I, we were supposed to have the podcast yesterday, but I asked if I could go snowboarding and say the weather was so nice. Like, or I'm like trying to move, but I'm stuck like physically. I need to, like when you're trying to wade through water and it's hard to move. And I'm like, I just want to go to the thing. I want to get to the car. Like that's the closest to a nightmare I have. You notice what you said concerning your body? I want to move. I want to, I want to move. Yeah. I want to get I'm, somewhere. I'm, I'm, I'm now making it real short. You're feeling that anger when you feel stuck. Yes. You cannot move. Yes. Right? Yes. 
100%. So you're going and going and going and going. Yes. I want to go. I want to go somewhere. I want to do stuff, but I can't. Mm -hmm. So. And then your buddy sometimes says, that's a quote from you. Well, this motherfucker needs to be put into bed. Otherwise, yeah. he does not rest. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Just try to. Maybe um, because we we have started this conversation, just want to re remember that your ability to eat more, enjoy yeah. more food, yeah, right, which leads then to a conversation about resting, about pushing yourself, about all these emotions that come up, and that maybe the 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 drive that you have, that the source is despite the freedom that you have, despite every like thing that you have achieved, there is still that source of anger that is driving you. And anger is sympathetic as fuck. Yeah, 100%. It's stimulus. Right? It's yeah. not rest digested. Not, it's not parasympathetic. Yeah. And have you noticed that the pressure where it expresses is the, the parts of your body that have hurt and that we've worked on, shoulder impingement, yeah. elbow, yeah. like this pressure in your hands, migraine, neck, like yeah. when they worked on your lats, it's also upper body, it's everything here. Then you, 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 you were sobbing and you were crying and so on. Yeah. So it's all like this area. It's not like that your like ankle is fucked up. Yeah. And Never had issues with that. Yeah, to be honest, and to, to, to get into the conversation back around pain, I, I experienced so many different kinds of, of, of people and pains and so on. And like, it is much clearer for me that this is connected so there is no no way around that um which doesn't mean that we cannot work mobility wise on that it helped right yeah and it works but it's not the only way and maybe some uh, to, to to maybe get a little bit of a different picture what would be so let's let's open up a a room of opportunity right now that you can go in or or not um what would be if everything that you're doing right now everything that you've achieved and want to achieve would be connected not with anger and would not be achieved with anger but with something else that allows you to be more often in a parasympathetic state or to be make it clearer that the source is not anger, but maybe love. That's really, I'm, I'm now going very far, right? Yeah. But I want to express the range of things and the range of possibilities that are there. Yeah. So choose choose the way you want to choose. Yeah. Right. A hundred percent. Like, and, and it's funny because it also depends when you're asking me. Like, there's there's just like times of the day where I'm like, oh, I love it. Like, it's all love. It comes from a point of love. But then there's also parts of the day where I'm kind of putting on my anger hat and I'm like, let's fucking go. Let's go get shit done. You know, let's go destroy the competition. And it's funny because like. I kind of operate better in that in that state than in the love state. Because when I'm in the love state, I'm like, hey, guys, let's, let's relax a little bit. It's all good. And it's really interesting because I oftentimes I have to switch back and forth between these states a lot when I handle my team, my staff. I'm coming from love, empathy. Hey, it's all good. Because, you know, like I, we used to push our staff really hard. Now we still do, but at the same time, we're also really there for them. But then some certain task, I'm just like, I got to get angry, man. I got to want to fuck shit up, so to speak, you know, like 
that competitiveness in me needs to be awakened for me to perform on a level that is kind of like head through the wall enough for me to plow through and do the things I need to be doing. I, I, I love what you said there is like more of the things I'm doing should be coming from a point of love. Or let's rephrase that again. Yeah. Because I don't want to paint that picture that the anger is bad, right? Yeah. It is fucking and highly productive. Yes. Of course. Yes. Like I know that for myself and doing like sports in so many different ways. Like when I do BJJ, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, martial arts, I cannot like hug them and, and think like yeah. there, there needs to be a other kind of energy, right? Yeah. That pushes that. That, that goes into that mode. Um, remember when I when I um, asked you, how aware are you of your body throughout the day? And that's why I said, let's rephrase that. It's not about, I should be doing that more or that's a bad way of doing things. It's more about how aware are you in which mode are you in and are you choosing to be in that mode right now or is it something that happens automatically and you cannot stop the fucking train yeah which then leads to you pushing yourself for weeks and your body breaking down yeah. after that period again because you are not really choosing to go into that mode and then being able to switch it again when yeah. you don't need that anymore. Yes. But it's happened automatically. That's why you're like going into a wall every now and then and experience illness, experience like so many other different things, maybe, maybe bodily pain and so on. Yeah. Right. It's it's so interesting that you say that. Uh you, earlier you said something, I think you said running like running, like you're running and you can't stop. And um, my buddy Elliot Hulse once, like freaking 10 years ago, had such an interesting video. I resonated oh, yeah, so yeah. yeah, I resonated so much with it. And he said, like, a lot of times what happens is when, like, imagine yourself, you're, you're walking down the street, sunny day, all of a sudden, crazy bulldog shows up you know, flexing its teeth, being clearly angry at you and starts chasing you. So what do you do? You freaking run. And the bulldog is right behind your heel. You run, you run, you run, you run. You look back, bulldog's still there. You look back, bulldog's still there. You look back, bulldog's not there. But you still run because over the last minutes, all you've had in mind was I need to get the fuck out of here. Otherwise, the bulldog's going to snap my heel and it's going to got me. It's going to get me. And he brings this wonderful metaphor of like, this is often life, especially when you come from hardship. And he, he kind of related his own story, how he was, how he, you know, he had nothing before he built strength camp. He was very, you know, financially poor and so on and so forth. And it was very similar to me. Like I said, like my, my family, I think was poorer than I thought. And I probably felt that. And then when I, you know, ventured out into the world, I built my very first business, the dating advice business. I literally, I was 16K in debt. I was like, for me, there was nothing else. I'm like, I'm going to make this work or I return with my tail tucked between my legs and I know I'll, I'll have failed forever. So these first six to 12 months where I was working as an unpaid intern, I didn't have enough money for food. Probably also their food scarcity probably coming in again. I literally I stole bananas from the store. It was just like little self-checkout. You know, I'm like, self-check, oh, that's pretty, I like that. And, you know, like, and then you press the banana button and it asked you how many bananas. I'm like, well, I got 20 in my hand, but I'm going to just put in five. Gives me 15 bananas for free. Like, that's my thought process, you know? And that's me running from the bulldog. That's all I've ever had, just running from the bulldog. Because if I don't push now, I'm not going to make any money. I'm never going to make it. My dreams are going to burst like a bubble. I'm going to go home. I'm going to be failed in my dreams. This is my only freaking chance I have at fulfilling my dream of traveling the world, making money and inspiring people. So if I don't, if I need a rest, fuck that. Go rest later when you've made it. But guess what? I did make it. Six to 12 months later. 
right? So after six months, I started building my brand a little bit. And after 12 months, I started getting paid, I paid back all my debt. I would say like after like 18 to 24 months, that's where I started making good money. And I started making more money than a doctor would keep getting paid in Austria. And I traveled the world and all that. So, but by the time I did that, I'm like, all I knew was run away from the bulldog. Otherwise, guys, there was no more bulldog. There hadn't been any freaking bulldog in months, but that's all I ever knew. And, you know, habit is a powerful force, be it a good habit or a bad habit. So, you know, somewhere along the line, I've just built this habit of like, just get to work. Otherwise, and, and now, I mean, I, when I don't work, nothing happens. In fact, sometimes even better things happen. Like I'm sometimes making even more money when I'm not involved in the business at all. It's like, cause I'm freaking let my employees do the things. I like, I love being involved because it's all I do. I love it. Nothing more than that. But even when I don't, again, there's no more freaking bulldog, but I'm so used to running that there's just like, I'm like, wait a minute. What, what else would I do other than running? And I think that's, as I'm getting older, my mom keeps saying that she's like, you're not 25 anymore, Max. And even yesterday, what do I do yesterday when I went snowboarding? I'm like, nah, just one more, just one more. Just one. I came home, I freaking fell into the door. I could barely move anymore. And it was after leg day two. I'm just like, no, the powder, let's go shred. And I loved it. And it's, it was so fulfilling. But of course, again, I'm tired as hell after I passed out at like 9.30 p.m. I don't have an off switch anymore. Uh, it's fucking broken. <laughs> it's broken, man. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot for that. And I, I think the, the best thing we could do is like normalizing the situation that we are in and normalizing um, how we are going about our lives um, and normalizing the pain first. Because of course we can talk about it rationally and you think like, well, it, of course, it makes more sense to rest more, but that's judging, right? Like, okay, that's better. I, mm. I know I should, I, I'm supposed to do that. Like, I, I know, but yeah. identity is wrapped up in that patterns, behaviors, and so on, yeah. which, deals, which leads to these emotions, whatever and whatever. And like shaming yourself does not help. And judging yourself. Yeah. That's why I... Uh, by the way, interrupted you with that self-referential commentary. Yeah, good point. And so the first thing I do, and I'm always getting back to the body, right? The physical, like yeah. the pain that 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 this physical holding you back, doing your sports, like doing what you love, is the first thing is to to emphasize that pain is normal. Like pain mm. is fucking normal. It's a function of your nervous system. Like you're supposed to feel pain in a certain way. But now it's, it's when we are normalizing that, it's then our ability to, how we are reacting, how <laughs> reacting, how <laughs> we are reacting towards that, right? Yeah. And that's why I said, let's normalize the anger. Mm -hmm. It's okay that you feel that anger. It serves a function. Yeah. But how it serves its function, that we could maybe change to make it more productive for you in the long run, to make yeah. it more um, supportive. Because, of course, you can push yourself. Sure. When you train, that's what I said earlier, with like building muscle, you need intensity. Yeah. It's not, and, and, and going into that intensity, it is not la vita ci fili. It's like going hard. But in order to go hard over the long term, and that's why I talk about, uh, about it with all of my athletes who are like maybe in pain or, or like want to achieve a certain, a certain thing with their body and, and they, they run into walls all the time. Uh, I'm telling them, well, being or or um, really going hard, the necessity for that is your health. 
Mm. Like that's the baseline of like being not only not only great at something, but pushing yourself. Like the baseline is health. So pushing yourself all the time and sacrificing your health will over the long term just spiral you down. Yeah. Your your body will break down more and more and more. And of course, you can come back from the injury. And of course, like there is a way you deal with pain and the pain is, is gone. And But if over the long term, you are breaking and breaking and breaking a little bit more, of course, you are recovering, but you're breaking and breaking and breaking, right? Yeah. Then you're spiraling down. So in order to push yourself hard, you need to be healthy. You need to rest and digest. Yeah. So that's why I said, let's normalize first. Let's tune into your body. Let's be aware of your body. That's why I asked you these questions before. It starts yeah. with awareness, awareness of your physical and of course, emotional and, and, and so on, everything that's connected with that. And then let's go into more of the, the control phase, like which ways we can control certain things. And when I'm aware of that anger, like am I able to switch it on, switch it off, or does it happen automatically? And in order to, in order to, um, to really use that, you need to be aware of it first yeah. before it happens right so how how does someone become more aware of this is it meditation is it a specific type of meditation is it specific exercises is it a certain mindset probably a combination of them that's where mobility for me was the tool so that's worked for me right mm. because i was so much in my head and um uh, yeah, just driven, right? That's why I empathize with you when you when you talk about that. And I, mm. I really know where you're coming from, right? Mm. And that's um, where I notice that, okay, I need to need to have a different relationship towards my body. Mm -hmm. And mobility training was, for me, a way to open that up. It's not like being more flexible doing the splits of course it it, it led to that yeah. it led to me being able to do all kinds of things but um, that was not the goal in the first place it was me having a better relationship with my body really being aware and it starts with simple things for example everyone knows this feeling of oh, i just need to uh, stretch it out right yeah but we don't give that space that's the first and most easy or easiest thing where you notice that you suppress the, the signals from your body. Yeah. Right. So your, your body give you sig the, gives you signals all the time. Yeah. Um, and it's just a matter of, Am I able to respond and am I able to, to read grab them. a hold of that and yeah. and use that signal? Or do I just press it away? Yeah. Physically, yeah. emotionally, everything. Like it's fucking connected. Like we, we cannot make a distinction between that. So for example, you feel that you want to stretch out or you feel you want to ah, just uh, right stretch your face. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a stretch. So for your jaw muscles and everything to relax the tension that build up. So do you use that? And do you like let it go and stretch it all out? Or do you think like, oh no, I'm not supposed to do that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not supposed to like stretch in that fashion. Like, well, how does that look? And blah, and blah. And you think about like your surrounding and be much more aware of your fucking surrounding than your own body. Mm. right so it starts with that like little things like that and that's why 
I opened up the discussion um, with you with that food. Yeah. Because what we are talking about right now is interoception, your ability to feel into your body. Mm -hmm. Like really physiologically, not only like spiritually, I'm feeling myself. No, it's mm -hmm. a function of your nervous system. That's why you feel hungry. It's interoceptive stimulus. That's why you feel too, as I said at the start of the conversation, take a dump. Yeah. So that's interoceptive. And most of the time we are just listening to our body when it comes to those things. And the other way around that when you are not so much in tune with your body in that sense, then you have certain behaviors that um, build up, which are not really uh, productive. For example, eating or then binge eating or that your body does not really process it because you're not resting, you're not in tune, you're not like switching off, right? So I, I hope I could, Paint 100%. that picture a little bit clearer how that is connected. 100%. So you're basically also saying that <clears throat> if I start listening and understanding, therefore, to my body more, I will have less cravings to just binge stuff my face with food. I will reach more of a balance Probably. because what I'm doing, what I've been doing for the last years is like I either diet perfectly where I'm like hitting my macros perfectly or I just go nuts, you know, once every two weeks, once a month or something. Like that, I just eat everything, which is cool. Like, you know, these, these are kind of like celebratory cheat days that we're having. We get together, we go to an Epic restaurant, but at the same time, like it's really excessive because I order all the desserts. Like one of my favorite things is we go to the restaurant. We're like, yo, just bring us all desserts, all of them. <laughs> well, I don't care. Just bring them on. Um, and I think I'll be able to achieve much more of a balance when I nurture that relationship to my body more. So one thing about balance, right? Because balance for me, as I uh, know how it feels like to push myself out of mm -hmm. self-destruction, mm -hmm. right? Is that I always connected balance with like being average. So fuck <laughs> balance. That's interesting. I, I don't want to be fucking average. Right. Yeah. And so the ego comes in that and so on and so on. But here's the thing. Of course, you can push yourself. Of course, you can fucking grind it out and shred it out on your snowboard when it's the perfect day. But what is balance is then to have that equal portion on the other side. So you're shredding your, your body away in that sense on the snowboard. But then you need to react towards that, what you spent. Yeah. So you give your body maybe two more days before you go into training. So you balance it out in order to like go again. Because you want to achieve that, that, um, pushing yourself over the long run and building it up, right? It's, it, it's all about like progress. Yeah. In order to achieve that progress, like we need to find that balance in, in reaction towards how far we went, not like being in that like average state all the time and try to like be balanced like all the time and being like in the middle like in in in, in the fulcrum of of the web yeah. you know no you, you like you, you you need to let it go up and down and up and down <laughs> maybe one uh, metaphor for that is to to look on an eeg like it goes up and goes down it goes up it goes down you don't want it flat. <laughs> right? That's a sick metaphor. And yeah, again, a lot of that leads into accepting and being like, okay, this is the way it is now. Like you said, even pain is normal. It's there for a reason. And don't be like, oh, no, no, the pain's like, all right, it's here now. Let's see what, what is it teaching us and so on and so forth. And I could draw so many business analogies to that as well. 
Um, you know, I've been working with clients that are building their own business now for half a decade. And a lot of times they freak out. They freak out when they're for the first time they're making more money than before because they're like, there's something must be wrong. How the fuck am I making so much money? They're freaking out when they have a bad month. They're freaking out when they need to make their first hire. A lot of times they freak out um, some of our more advanced clients. They usually have like one A player in their company at first. And then that A player leaves and then they freak out. And they're like, oh my, like my whole business is fuck because that one person leaves. And I'm always like, relax. I've been there a thousand fucking times. I'm yeah. still here. In fact, I'm making more money than ever. But because you experience it for the first time and there's a shock to the system. And because they don't know how to, they think get, coming into business, they think like everything needs to go well, everything needs to go up. It just, they don't understand, at least not consciously, that there's peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys, up and downs. So those downs are just as much part of it. And, and it's just like those who end up making a ton of success happen, those are the ones that don't stop when they're in a valley. They accept the valley, they accept the low as it is. They even, they uh, the, the craziest psychopaths even welcome it they're like hell yeah fuck yeah fine like those are, those are always the best guys they're like fuck yeah a down like great lesson for me to learn thank you it's a great way for me to become humble again like those are the folks that they're gonna make it just like you said with the eeg going up and down right so in order to maybe um, to maybe use that a little bit more is for me, what helped me is, well, I'm here to help myself, right? Mm -hmm. I want to help myself through that process. And that does not work when I'm, when I'm beating myself up all the time. Yeah. And it, it, it does not help when I'm stressing myself because of course stress like it's like between our fucking ears yeah and of course there is the ability to push and it's still there but i help myself like going into that mode and then i'm using it i am using it i get not used by it so it, it's a use not an abuse mm. and um of course, there is that sense of uh, maybe I could be further and da, 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 and blah and blah. but man, like that's expectation management. Yeah, like it's pretty fucking simple. Yeah, and having those expectations, um, you can ask yourself like, is that healthy? Is that healthy? You're just starting out right now mm -hmm. with moving more going into the gym is it helping you to push yourself so hard because you want to get a six pack in four weeks or something else like no this expectation is not helping you right now because you're not at that stage yeah of course you can have a maybe a dream or or a vision but having a dream and a vision is another energy than having an expectation so concerning, for example, mobility work or concerning dealing with your physical pain is not having the expectation that first there is a therapist, a doctor or someone else who can get rid of that for you. Hmm. And maybe second thing that it will be away in a week. Or two weeks like this expectation does not help you and so how can you make it productive and help yourself right my girlfriend once said something really interesting it was it was many years ago i was really down um because something happened in the business and i would like beat myself up over it and she's like you know hey listen like you need to you need to take some time off because like my typical response head to the wall is like work more fix it you go know? even further yeah. yeah 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 exactly push even more but you know some things in through their very nature cannot be fixed by you working even harder 
In fact, it can only be fixed by you working less hard. Example, pain, for example, right? You got a lot of pain because you overwork yourself. But I never made that connection. I'm like, again, all I know is running away from the bulldog. All of a sudden, you're telling me walk towards it. You know, it, it seemed counterintuitive. And my girlfriend just said, she's like, baby, nobody's being helped. Nobody's being helped if you work yourself to death. You can, in fact, help less people. Because she couldn't, she, I couldn't get myself from that selfish angle of like, hey, go relax because otherwise it's bad for you. But she found that other angle of like, you're saying you're working yourself to death because you want to help people. Motherfucker, you can't help anybody if you work yourself to death. So how come you have the arrogance, nice mind frame, nice frame switch. How come you have the arrogance of pushing yourself too much when you need to be there for people years down the line? Right. Right. And it's... uh maybe the analogy towards the physical body is when you are in pain and that's maybe a nugget for everyone like to 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 implement right away when you are in pain shoulder pain hip pain knee pain doesn't matter it does not help to move into that pain even more <laughs> because your nervous system just learns that pain more and more and more mm. It learns all the fucking time. So when you have that painful stimulus and you go into that pain all the time, it learns, oh, there is pain. Well, this movement is connected with pain. Let's make it more efficient. All right. More pain, more pain, more pain, right? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> and you're building that pathway, that neurological pathway, like the plasticity builds up in that way that the pain, you get more sensitive towards the pain. Yeah. You feel it much quicker, much easier. But that's yeah. not what we want. Yeah. Right? We don't want to be uh, uh, in pain all the time. In fact, we want to be pain-free. So the first thing you should do is to get into a pain-free range. Yeah. Or other question, in which way, not if you can move pain-free or not, but in which way you can move that same area pain-free. Yeah. So test it out. Okay, I have shoulder pain, like this nasty strength training illness of mm -hmm. having frontal shoulder pain. Okay, I'm using my shoulder here and it hurts, like bench press. Yeah. Okay, let's test it out. Does that hurt in the same way when you use dumbbells because you're using a rotator cuff in a different way. You need to stabilize it a little bit differently. Like you have a different position of your scapula because it moves a little bit more freely, right? So it's another stimulus. Does that inflict the pain in the same way? Maybe it does. Okay, what's when you change your position of the body? For example, laying flat down where your scapula is retracted and really blocked in a way to move. Mm. How is it when you just doing some overhead presses? Could be that this is pain-free. Interesting, right? It's the same joint. Yeah. Different motion, different like body position, different angle. And it does not hurt. Hmm, cool. Let's work with everything that is pain-free and let's work with the pain, not against the pain, not into the pain, but let's work with it. That's why I said, how can I help myself? Because I want to work with myself, not against myself. Mm. It's the same with the pain. I'm working with the pain. The pain is my teacher to tell me a way where I can move it but do not inflict the pain. Do not make it worse because pain is a function and pain is for you to, I always have that, 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 that phrase in mind. Um, pain is a defense mechanism of the body and the, the signal for change. Pain is the signal for change. You need to change something. Your body is telling you, hey, 
motherfucker. Stop right here. Does not help you. It's the wrong fucking way. It's like a stop sign at the end of the road where it goes yeah. down into a fucking cliff. Mm. So of course you can like try to survive like going down that cliff when it's snowy and you have a snowboard. Cool, but <laughs> 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 otherwise you're probably dead by the end of the <laughs> of the mountain. <laughs> yeah, you know it's it's really cool to see and listen to you talking about this mobility thing because I could tell you're not just like a physiotherapist who kind of like studied it because they were interested in it. But you mentioned it earlier for you, it was that, that thing that turned your life around. It was that thing that, cause I asked you, how do you get body awareness? And you said, well, for me, mobility was the key to everything and working with you back then when we worked over a couple months together and working with you now again, is that I feel that I feel that this is for you this is your life. This is something that you devote, devoted yourself to with all your heart and your soul. And that's really cool. That's really inspiring. That's also why I wanted to have you on the podcast. Cause I'm like, you're not just someone who's helped me with this expertise, but you're someone who freaking lives it. And also I could see it on your Instagram. Like when you do these videos, I'm like, this guy fucking loves this. <laughs> it's not just, it's like, you're not really watching someone trying to educate people. Sure you do. But it's almost like you're watching someone who does what what he loves all day. And I'm like, I can literally like, okay, like probably before and after this video, he did a bunch of other shit just for fun. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. And, and that's really cool. That's really freaking inspiring. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for the gold. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. What's how can people find you on the gram? What what's your or what what's the preferred way you want people to find you? Yeah. So uh, moving monkey, when you type it into Google, you will find it. It's like the only uh, thing most of the time that comes up is my site. Nice. Um, so moving monkey on Instagram, moving monkey uh, dot de. Um, right now we are in that stage. Everything is German. I'm sorry. <laughs> not the one. Not the one on one coaching. Of course, I can customize that into English, right? Yeah. Um, but my programs and my uh, my my site and so on and uh, the the reels and all the content that I do is is German right now. Um, but still, I've 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 uh, yeah helped uh, English clients as well um, in in different areas. So in a one on one coaching, that's always possible. But just uh, shoot me a message. Uh, for example, um, when you go on to moviemonkey.de, there is a little like chatbot link it's not a chatbot it's you can uh, choose your own way in which uh, you want to contact uh, us or me in that way so whatsapp email instagram facebook whatever it it uh, finds the direct way to us and uh, let's talk nice how why why what keeps you from going international cuz your english is clearly there yeah, thanks. Um, the the uh, foundation. I first want to have a like real, a uh, good foundation in my whole systems, whole processes, and so on. Yeah. And the last few years, I've been all over the map concerning my products, concerning mm. uh, like the way I I, I did certain things, and uh, just the last two years, I'm. I was really building that good infrastructure, right? There, there were so many parts I already did, but to have a really clear system and to not being all over the place with, okay, I'm doing seminars and here's an online course. And by the way, yeah. I wrote two books and uh, three, but uh, like the hey, first one was... You, you wrote Sorry? three books? I didn't even know. Yeah, yeah. so... It's uh, that's the that's the first one, calisthenics and mobility, and that's by the way in English available as well. Ah, so there we that's go. the first step, right? <laughs> <laughs> so calisthenics and mobility. Um, I did that with my uh, former girlfriend. Um, built a uh, uh, a coaching system around uh, mobility and calisthenics, and uh, having like clear progressions and so on and so on. Um, so. 
yeah, maybe the book was the first step like two years ago to have something in English. Mm. Um, but yeah, to be to be honest, like the long term, I don't need to push myself and open up like five different channels um, to uh, to to grow and scale. I want to scale the base and to have yeah. a really strong base. And then the switch into English is fucking easy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. So. And I still have like uh, some things that I want to want to build. Um, we have an app um, that is uh, on the App Store, um, my academy. Um, and uh, yeah, so really building that foundation and then going in internationally. Nice, man. You know, whenever you're ready to crush, let me know. Super happy to help. I mean, I, I know so many people that could use your help. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like yeah, I man. said, like, you know, a lot. I mean, I have that thought all the time, even with my with my fitness mentor, nutrition mentor, and so on and so forth, of like, do I want to spend money on that every single month? Blah blah blah. Don't I want to save the money? Don't I want to invest it? But ultimately, man, like the f the freaking fact that you no longer have pain somewhere where you have it, that's already worth it. Plus, in an ideal world. That's not what I did, but in an ideal world, you do it before you even get to fucking pain. Um, yeah. And the thing is with this pain, you know, the first time when I had shoulder impingement, you just started, you just start noticing a little bit and you're like, ah, it's probably just slept a little weird, whatever. And then you just kind of brush it under the table. And then like, next thing you know, six months later, you're like, how long have I had this fucking pain? No, that shit doesn't go away by itself. And then a lot of times it, it's gotten so bad on some days that it's like seriously um like impeding your ability to do what you need to do work wise personal life and so on and so forth and it's just such a slow burn it's you know like when you put a when you put a frog in the hot water it jumps out but when you slowly right. heat the water it won't notice until it dies that's kind of how it's always been for me and then and then you're in fucking pain you're like, you go into doctors and of course, what do they do? They give you injections. They give you fucking pills, you know, all kinds of dumb shit that just kind of helps you on the surface level. And then trying to find someone, you're desperate. You know, I just want the pain to go away. You're not even doing research. Who's the best? Who can help me? Who do I resonate with? You just Google it. You click on the first one and you just whatever, you know, and then you buy a book and you don't read the book. <laughs> you know, and, and, and it's like, again, like for me, I spend so much money every single month on like nutrition, nutrition, expert, fitness, fitness, expert, fitness, gyms, mobility, like, and it's so fucking worth it. It's, it's so worth it. It, it sucks sometimes when it's like 7 PM, you're tired. Ah, I've done my mobility routine yet, but you always feel good when you do do it. And also, I mean, the fact that I'm paying you helps me to do it because otherwise i'm like nah i'll do it tomorrow but now i'm like well you did pay for it so get it worth get, get worth your money and you know and you know like uh, as i'm getting older every day i that's one of the lessons that i'm just like more and more on it's like don't let it even come so far till you're in fucking pain especially you know if you're a follower of mine listening to this you're probably resonate with my message of like push hard go to the gym get the whole package you know and if you do like like you said the balance and if you do push yourself really hard you also need to make sure that you have that counter thing of like finding out more about your body listening to your body getting in the the sympathetic and the parasympathetic like all, you know all these things the ups and downs and not just push 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 i mean just this freaking podcast was super valuable for me because of, of the lessons that you gave me here. And I hope people listening to this, they can resonate with it. I hope they follow you and they check out your stuff. I mean, honestly, also, they don't even, you don't even need to speak English to check, to get what you're doing on your Instagram. Cause a lot of it is just you moving. Right. Um, but yeah, like I wish I had done it sooner, but then at the same time, I'm happy that I'm, I did it at only 32. When I look at my daddy just turned 60, like I didn't do shit. Like he's, he's fucked, you know, with any pain that he has now, he should have done it 30 years ago when he's my age. Right. Right. Yeah. So, uh, what you said there is, is so profound because you maybe know this uh, phrase, like 
a healthy man has a thousand wishes, an ill man has only one. Oh, right. And that's I'm always keeping to the forefront, or maybe uh, phrase it a little bit differently. Like health is not everything, but without health, yeah, everything is nothing. Yeah, right. So how we, how can we move from move and move, ha, right? <laughs> <laughs> how can we move from doing the things, um, with our body, like working working out um doesn't matter what how can we move from doing it out of a lack like uh, not enough not being enough not good enough not uh, uh not being able to do certain things right so focusing on the pain all the time focusing on the restrictions all the time and let's maybe sound cheesy, but um, in, in German, it, it sounds a little bit more, for me at least, a little bit more fresh. Uh, moving from a lack towards the abundance. Mm. Um, I say it's cheesy because in this like self-development world and like business and so on, always like, you need to be abundant. And you, <laughs> like, you know what I mean, right? Yeah. So... But being abundant I, I, towards the body or with our body, I just mean that you have all the resources necessary to get pain-free or more pain-free at least, to work on your restrictions and move more freely, to, move, to like feel better in your body and in your movements. And that's that's just just your body. You you don't need equipment. Like you yeah. don't need like everything you saw at, at the beginning of the podcast. You don't need that. You just need your body and maybe the 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 tools and the understanding. The it starts with the awareness. Hmm. How to work with yourself and with your body, not against it. And maybe that summarizes it for. Uh, all that today a hundred percent leon you're a freaking legend when are we gonna meet man in person we've never met in person. yeah right <laughs> <laughs> you're in uh, cologne or something right yeah right 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 now in cologne and um because my girlfriend is uh italian um switching between germany and italy Ooh. all the time so where, it helps where exactly to... in italy um it's northern I italy so it's uh, vicino di Brescia. Uh, it's oh, uh, in in so mezzo no. di Brescia e uh, Milano. Oh, uh, dude, I'll, I I go to Milan all the time. It's one of my all-time favorite cities. Yeah, cool. So how well, cool would it be? It's if we just now a drive, Milan? or maybe one and a half hour drive away. Dude, I'd be so down. I'd be so down because um, yeah, like I said, I love Milan. I'm there all the time. Yeah, I love and I love some. Uh, some good speciality coffee. I know some great places. So oh, if you're down for a coffee, let's go. I don't know how far your coffee game is. Mine is like kind of growing better and better and really strong. Oh, yeah? So I, I'm really snobbish about that. <laughs> Dude, I, I'm, I don't I'm the drink... opposite. Yeah. <laughs> I do I, I do coffee that, once. Like, I like... do coffee once a week and it's usually Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. We need to upgrade that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 100%, man. 100%. Yeah, but I, I think we, we get it going sometime. And uh, even if it's in the gym in Vienna. Yeah, also sounds good. Sounds good. So folks, check them out. Moving.monkey on Instagram. Movingmonkey.de, was it? Right, right, right. Check him out. Check my homeboy out. Give him a, a, a thumbs up. He's a true legend. Leon, thanks a lot for your time. Thanks a lot for your time again. Sorry we had to reschedule and all no, that. No, no, uh, that's right. You need shit, to give that inner child some love. Hell yeah, man. Exactly. Uh, see you on Monday. I think we got our call, right? Yes, that's okay. right. Looking forward, man. Dude, have a great weekend. Thanks for your time, bro. Much Perfect. love and uh, stay thanks in touch. Keep moving. Yes. <laughs> GG. Bye-bye.